In the previous episode, I was working on filling up the pots and bowls in the Patreon shrine, as you can see behind me. The last one to be inserted was this socialite. And the only thing standing in the way of the Patreon shrine completion is the Sea of Blue. We will be filling that up today. You're watching Sariscapades, my name is Chuck and welcome to my garden. You are looking at what I call the Patreon Shrine. This is a dedication at my tribute to my Patreon sponsors. It is a landscape that I patterned after the 12 Apostles. It is a rock formation out in regional Victoria. I actually started working on this last year but I only got to fill up the bowls last week. The ground used to be full of all sorts of blue succulents and this is what I called the Sea of Blue. It was mostly the Sinisho serpents and they were taking over the entire area. They were smothering all of the other rosettes, which is why I decided to pull them out and redo the Sea of Blue. Right now, I'm determined to fill it up mostly with rosettes, Echeverias, Graptoverias, Sedums or whatever. Mainly because I want to maintain the growth pattern. They have to be symmetrical or at least they have to be at roughly the same heights. I'm not actually sure if I have enough plant material to fill up the gaps. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Even if that means that I have to pull up plants from my other landscapes. That's how determined I am. Before I begin, I had to make sure I remove all of the obstacles that are blocking the way. That way I do not trip on any of them. And I sure do not want to embarrass myself on camera. The first thing that comes to mind now that I have a clear view of the area is that I want to redo, replant all of the stuff that you see on the ground right now. I've got a bunch of Imbricata, Lawi, Elegans, Violet Queens, Tipis, I think these are Cleones, and there's a Monroe, there's a Bluebird, a bunch of Cloudbursts, and a bunch of Weeds. I guess I have to remove all of them before I start putting them back in. This is going to be quite a task. I wish I could just Thanos snap them away, but a quick cut montage is the next best thing. had to be done. Now that I've tan snapped all of these plants, I now have a blank slate, a blank canvas to work with. I'm going to start on this side, continuing with what I did the last time. This is the plunge after the waterfalls. And I led it with light colored succulents, mostly elegance, which means that it would be fine to use elegance here. Although the idea I had in mind is that this area would be reserved for light colored plants because the way I envision it is that there's a whole lot of violence, a whole lot of turbulence in this section. Imagine the waves crashing down, the waterfalls meeting the sea. There's a lot of crashing and falling. The waters are definitely not going to be calm, which means that in real life terms, it would be white. I've gathered some of my light colored echeverias and placed some of them here. I think I still have more scattered around in the garden, but I think I can work on this. I can work with this for the first instance and just reinforce if I need more. I'm going to lead this with my Echeveria Desmetiana and my Echeveria Domingo. These are going to be the foundation plants. They are going to be the focal point, maybe something like this. I'm placing the Morning Beauty here, Desmetiana, because it has a similar color to the Violet Queen. So in a way, the Violet Queens are serving as leading lines towards the Desmetiana, while the Elegans are pointing to the Domingo. And to fill up the gaps between and around them, I might use more of the Elegans or probably even some of my sedums. I'm thinking the sedum clavatum would be a good fit as well as the graptopetalum mendoza. And to further highlight the splash, I'm going to insert the bluebird.
for the deeper bits, I'm going to be using the Embricata. I've given them a bit of space, that way they could still grow, since as you know, my Embricata can get quite large. At the same time, this would give them enough airflow to survive the moisture, the humidity of winter. And lastly, I've chosen the Imbricata to go here because they provide the dark blues, signifying the deeper parts of the ocean. And speaking of dark, it's getting quite dark outside, so I'll probably have to continue this tomorrow. And that was it. That was the last plant to go in. Now, let's go for a wider view. So I finally finished filling up the whole space, the whole sea. And now for the fun part, clean up. <sighs> Behind the camera is this big magical place where I can just dump all of the trash and you wouldn't know. <laughs> this is the garden equivalent of sweeping things under the rug. Don't judge me. But since I've shown you this anyway, part of the cleanup process requires me to replant the stumps that I left. Because as you remembered, I chopped off a lot of the heads earlier. Place them in the ground. And for those of you who are wondering how I managed to have all of these plants for fillers and stuff, well, one of my secrets is just that. I don't throw away most of the stumps. I just plant them in empty spots around in my garden, let, leave them alone, and just wait for a few months or a few seasons, and lo and behold, lots more plant material. That's actually a huge task, so I don't think I have to show you that. It's so tedious, man. I hate it. You are now looking at the completed sea of blue. I have filled them up with a bunch of different types of succulents, different textures, different colors. And if you look around, I now have a range of various cool colors. In the previous incarnation, I only had three varieties or at least three main types of plants, three main colors that I was playing around with. And those were white, light blue, and dark blue, or blue-green. This time, I expanded the range somewhat. So I've added a bunch of greens, a bit more blues, blues, purples, some, some of them turning violet, and maybe even pink, although that's mainly because of winter. I've also added a lot of whites. No, that does not make me the Night King. I've also played around with textures and sizes. It won't be evident right now since they are all just cuttings, but it will all make sense once they have grown and filled up the area. I know what they're going to look like once they've filled in, and that's the look that I'm going for. I wish I were like Bran or Doctor Strange. I could just look into the future and see what they would turn out to be. But unfortunately, I do not have that power. So the next best thing that we could do is just to wait. Roll call. So over on the left side, we have Violet Queens, Echeveria Elegance. 
Mexican Giants, a Domingo, a bunch of Imbricata, and that's for the left side. This is what connects to the water pearls. And over in the middle, we have two clusters here. On the left cluster, there's three Echeveria Domingos of different sizes. I placed the largest one in the middle, flanked by two others. And surrounding them are a bunch of whites. Yeah, Night King. And these are the Graptopetalum Mendoza. It is a Mendoza or Bernalese. Anyway, it's one of the subspecies of Paraguayense, that small type. Again, Night King. Whites, Night King, get it? On the left outer side would be a bunch of tiny elegance, the same as on the left side. And on top of it would be a bunch of Graptoviria Moonglow and Subcorimbosa Lau 26. Now moving over to the right, you would see a bunch of Sidum Clavatum. They start off green but they turn blue, so I love the color shift there. These larger plants at the bottom, these are Echeveria Cloudburst. And on top of them are Echeveria Topsy-Turvy. This is a Ranyonii. This is the upturned version of the Echeveria Ranyonii. Surrounding it again are more Sedum Clavatums, which leads us to the right side. And on the right side, I've got uh, lots of greens here. These are the Sedeveria Hameli. And on the outer end, representing the deeper part of the sea, would be the Imbricata. They are dark blue after all. Now, if you look closely, there's a bunch of plants in between the two. You could see that they're a bit purplish or brown. These are my Graptoberia Rose Queens. I used to have a lot more of them, but unfortunately they died. And that's what's left of them. Fortunately, I saved their stumps, planted them in the ground, and the stumps survived. They gave me all of these offsets. I've also filled up the back with some Crashula arborescent subspecies Angulatifolia. The common name would be Ripple Jade because of their curly leaves. They tend to form large bushes, large clumps, so you would have to periodically trim them down. So in this case, I'm putting them at the far back. That way, I won't be bothered as much when they get taller because they won't be smothering the other plants. Apart from that, the only thing that I could do to improve here is to top dress all of these bowls. That's a decision for some other time. I still have to look at the range of pebbles available to me and I'll revisit that idea some other time. It took me a lot of time just to fill it up and it was not one without making a bit of sacrifice. I had to butcher some parts of my other landscapes but then again, I was planning to work on them anyway. In the next episode, I might work on that stream leading to the bowl. I'd like to completely remove everything around the stream and redo the tapestries because all of the plants there are overgrown. I might remove all of the ground cover, the sedums that I placed on the ground because they have been smothering all of the other plants as well as the ripple jade, the crashula. And having to trim them every few months is starting to get annoying. I'm thinking of going with smaller rosettes, smaller plants like I did in the sea. And that might be less work for me in the long run. So I'll see you then. Bye. Seriscapades is made possible with the support of my Patreon sponsors. Patreon allows you to support content creators like me with a small monthly donation. You can pledge your support by heading over to patreon.com slash seriscapades. If you're in Australia, I've got some of my plants for sale. Check out my plant shop at seriscapades.com slash theplantshop with dashes.